Dear Aya, dear ladies, ladies and gentlemen, women's rights are human rights, was a signature quote from Hillary Clinton and was a clarion call to address female rights. The Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW Conference in Beijing in 1995, was indeed a landmark conference. Now that CEDAW is over 25 years old, it would be good as African women to go down memory lane and take stock of progress and ask ourselves to what extent the promised reform have been implemented. We must also examine why progress has been limited in many countries and we need to seek ways to overcome the obstacles. There is no doubt that some improvements have been made as moves have been made to implement the recommendations made at the CEDAW conference in the first place. There have been attempts made towards the development of new policies and guidelines and the creation of networks of gender experts. Yet, in spite of all these efforts, one gets the impression to use the famous moonshot moment that men have gone to the moon and back while women are still in the starting block with a society still trying to sensitize itself to the unacceptable marginalization of its women. Women are slowly coming to terms with the society that has been and is still depriving her of her rights, constitutionally or otherwise. Ladies and gentlemen, in Africa, women have made important strides, especially in the political arena, at least for some countries and regions. Institutions like the African Union has made a special effort to promote gender parity within a few of its bodies. African women have lobbied hard to ensure that many countries ratify the CEDAW, or better known in the UN language as the International Bill of Rights for Women. Unfortunately, obstacles persist and issues like poverty reduction strategies still do not take into account differences in income and power between women and men, hampering efforts to finance programs that reduce inequality. In addition, the majority of African women are still being denied education and employment, still face violence, political and economic inequality, and have limited opportunities in trade, industry and government. Poverty, ladies and gentlemen, still has a woman's face because women generally feel that the instrument their respective government have signed have failed to be translated into positive changes in their daily lives. Compounding the situation are setbacks such as HIV AIDS and of course recently the COVID-19 pandemic that is destroying the health of many of more women than men in Africa, eroding some of the development gains women had attained. Over 25 years after Beijing, African women are much poorer. More often than none, men are more likely to find job, a job and enterprises run by men and they have easy access to support from institutions such as banks. Perhaps the most inhibiting factor in that women in Africa continue to be denied an education, often the only ticket out of poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, disparities between girls and boys start in primary school and the differences widen up through the entire educational system. In total enrollment in primary education, Africa registered the highest relative increase among regions during the last decade. But given the low proportion of girls being enrolled, the continent is still far from the goal of attaining intake parity. Policies specifically targeting girls were responsible for considerable improvement in many African countries and thanks to the policies sensitizing parents through the media, reducing school fees and providing a modicum infrastructure such as toilets for girls in public primary schools in rural areas. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time children go through high school and reach college, the gender gap has become even wider and revealed through the narrow participation of women and especially in the STEM 
and other technical fields. It is acknowledged that to enable women to escape poverty, development policies should place more emphasis on their contributions to the economy. Even though women make up a significant proportion of the economically active population, their contribution is not fully recorded because they are mainly engaged in, far, in family farming or in the informal sector. In other cases, why they do such as household work is not considered an economic activity. In agriculture, Sub-Saharan Africa's most vital economic sector, women contribute 60 to 80% of labor in food production, both in household consumption and for sale. But while they do most of the work, they lack access to market and credit. In spite of all the challenges, women in some African countries have moved into positions of political influence, with countries like Rwanda leading the way in terms of representation of women leadership at the political level, where the world average is just about 15%. Yet it is clear that women in parliament have made a difference in the adoption of gender sensitive policies. The quota system is more than needed if legislation like legalization of abortion, countering domestic violence, family law and ensuring child support are to be voted in. It is thus clear that in the global debates, women issues should not be more made simplistic or be reduced to a single denominator. Women issues from the girl child all the way up to womanhood must be all encompassing and must be protected from violence and harmful practices. Countries must put in place basic strategies to lift women out of poverty and to halt the spread of diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, empowerment of women, she says, should not be confined to a narrow range of sectors within countries, but should also ensure that equal participation of women in fast-moving global processes because equality is still not a reality. I thank you for your attention.